guys, welcome back to my channel, Mermaid Nina here. Well, I've got another tips and tricks planning video for you guys. Um, a few videos ago, I did do my top 18 things I pretty much always travel with, whether I'm going on a plane or a boat or a car or theme parks or wherever. I tend to always pack the same 18 things, and you guys seem to really enjoy that video, which I so much appreciate. So tonight, I thought we would talk about my top 20 things that I always have in my airplane bag. That's right, when I am going to the airport, when I'm flying, when I'm going to a new destination, these are the top 20 things that are pretty much always in my airplane bag. Now I've shown my airplane bag to you guys a few times. It's either a tote or a backpack, like a full size backpack, both of which are by Vera Bradley. Now these are the things that are most likely gonna be in that bag. And like I said, if you want to know the additional things I'm taking with me, check out that other video, that top 18 things that I always travel with, because I'm not actually going to talk about those basic items in this video. This is in addition to that video. Are you guys ready for my top 20 things that I'm going to take with me when I'm going on a flight, when I'm getting prepared to go through the airport, go through security, flying in the air, all those great things, and then of course getting to my destination. So in no particular order, although I am gonna talk about number one first, so the first thing I always have with me, and I highly suggest it, is some form of bag that is separate from your airplane bag, which is separate from the backpack and the tote. Some sort of small bag that stays really, really close to your person. This is where you're gonna put your ID your passport, your cash, something that's gonna stay on your body, something that's easy to get to, right? And something that's kind of, well, harder to steal or harder to leave behind. So I've shown this before. This is my Lululemon everyday bag. It is a belt bag. I do wear it cross body. So inside this, depending on what I'm go doing, I will adjust to be the things I need to quickly get in and out, right? So as you go through security, you have to show them your ID. You have to show them your boarding pass. Sometimes you have to show them your passport. I'm gonna keep all of that close at hand and always have it on me as a just in case. So yes, in addition to that big bag, I'm always gonna have a small belt bag on me for the easy accessible items, if that makes sense. So in addition to that, right, number two, slip on shoes or socks. Anyone know why? <laughs> it is for security guys. Most destinations, I'm not gonna say all because there could be a destination out there, but most destinations when you're going through airport security, they want you to take off your shoes. They make you remove your shoes and stick them in a bin, right? This is where you want slip on shoes, easy off, easy on. I can't tell you how many times I've seen people trying to deal with shoelaces and knots and they're trying to sit down and there are no chairs. There's nowhere to sit. So they're trying to like hopping on one foot, trying to untie their shoe. Oh, please slip on shoe and socks, please. I am a Birkenstock girl. I am not going to lie about that. I wear my Birkenstocks everywhere. However, when you're gonna go through security at the airport, you probably wanna pack a little pair of socks with you. So when you take off your slip off shoes, whether they're slippers or flip flops or Birkenstocks, you don't wanna walk around security floor with bare feet, right? Ugh, all those people and all those toes that have been all over that floor and probably haven't been washed, yeah. I'm a little weird about that. So yeah, slip on shoes, easy off, easy on, for a reason, right? And then the addition of socks. I just keep an extra pair of socks in my pocket. When I have to go through security, I quickly slip on those socks, take the socks off, throw them in my bag. I don't have to ever see those socks again until I get to you know, the laundry machine. But yes, that is my big tip there. Number two. Number three is headphones now. Headphones are especially perfect if you're flying someplace like Delta, where you typically will get your private TV, right? You have some place to listen to music, watch movies, or play a game that's on your own personal TV. Having a set of headphones is key for that. These are my daughters, right? So they're the big on headphones. 
I actually keep mine in this little tiny zip-on case. They're just a little pair of headphones, right? Sometimes if you're lucky, the airline will hand out free little earbuds. I tend to kind of save them, throw them in the airplane bag because you never know who's going to need them. You could also do, you know, earbuds here. If those work for you on the airplane, this is a good idea as well. It's a form of entertainment, but it's especially helpful when you get on a flight that has that private TV or some place to connect headphones because not all airlines will give headphones out for free. In fact, often they'll charge you, what, three to five dollars for a cheapy pair of headphones? Yeah, just pack your own one for every single member of the family. Next up is gum. Now I know gum is in my top 18 video, but it's especially important for flights, right? For ear popping. I can't tell you how much of a gum chewer I am on flights. I will pretty much chew gum the entire flight, but most specifically you want to chew gum during takeoff and landing, right? To help with that ear popping. I actually put gum in a little smidget case, throw it in my bag, and that way it's easy out, easy in the mouth, easy put away, but yeah, gum. Gum is definitely key to help prevent uh, ear popping. I also, maybe it's just me, I think the chewing of gum kind of distracts me a little bit, and maybe I won't be so nervous during takeoff and landing. Uh, true story, I'm not a huge fan of flying. Will I fly? Yes. Am I a travel agent? Yes. Do I absolutely love flying? No. I will do it, I don't have a huge fear, but it's just not one of my favorite things to do. I am definitely grateful when I am done with the flying part of the trip. So anything I can do to kind of just relax and be at peace, I absolutely will do it when it comes to flights. Next up is a passport case. Now, not every time do you fly will you need a passport, right? But if you're going international, you do want a passport. And I have a lot of people who always pack their passport Anyway, especially now that smart IDs are becoming required, you can easily bypass that and just bring your passport, right? So I absolutely love to have an RFID protected passport case. Now here is one of mine right here. It's actually a family size passport case. So I can carry all of our passports together in one folder. I love that it has extra space for cash and maybe our plane stubs, maybe our hotel key, whatever's going on. I can keep it all in this case. Again, RFID protected. Now, if it's just me, I'm going on a cruise, I'm going for work, I'm gonna pack my personal size passport case. What I love about this passport, in addition to it being RFID protected, is it has a little window in here with a strap. I can't really show you for security reasons, but I can actually put the strap over the picture with my ID on it so that when I go to the security guard, I have an easy open to show them the page they want. I'm not flipping through the book trying to find that one page, right? So you can have it easily opened to that page. It also will carry cash, cards, hotel keys, I've got pockets for, you know, stubs, flight stubs, whatever I want in here. And it has a nice little closure so I can keep it closed and nothing will fall out. So between the family one and the personal one, I absolutely love taking a passport case. It just kind of keeps that, pa I mean, the passports are expensive. They're really important. It's a form of ID. You definitely don't want to lose it, nor do you want someone to steal your information. And yes, sadly, there are people out there that do that, unfortunately. Next one is sanitation wipes. Now I do talk about this a lot in many of my videos. I pretty much always have them with me, but these ones I especially have for flights, right? So I like this car size version of wet ones because I can easily put this in the pocket of my backpack, almost like where the water bottle would go, right? So I absolutely 100% will wipe down the, my a seat when I get on the airplane, right? You wanna wipe down your armrests. You wanna wipe down the window or the screen or whatever you're gonna be touching, right? Your tray, both in front of the tray and behind the tray, right? The pockets, ew, do you know how dirty those pockets are? People love to blow their nose and stick the tissue in their pocket or spit out their gum and stick it in the pocket. Wrappers, vomit bags, I mean all sorts of gross things go in those pockets and it still grosses me out when I see people with their like Starbucks and then they stick their Starbucks in the pocket and then they pull it out and they drink and I just, ugh. 
It creeps me out. It's so gross in that pocket, guys. So you definitely wanna sanitize all parts of your seat of the plane. That includes your seat belt. If you're next to the window, the window seat, and you know those air vents ahead of you, yeah, give those a nice little wipe too, especially if you're gonna be touching them throughout your flight. Anything you think you might touch or lean up against, uh, just be safe, guys, and wipe it down. No, I'm not a germaphobe. I have flown so much in my life and have gotten sick from being on the flights that now I'm just extra cautious. I just am. I'm pretty sure a majority of my sicknesses while on vacation came from flying. Just, you know, the person you're next to, the dirtiness of your seat, the air that's circulating. Ugh. Next is motion sickness protection. Now, not everyone is prone to motion sickness. I 100% Am, but sometimes you get involved with a bumpy or rocky flight and you weren't necessarily aware that you're a little sensitive to motion. So prepare and plan in advance. Go ahead and pack that Dramamine. They have adult versions and children's versions as well. There's a pill out there called Bonine, B-O-N-I-N-E. It is very similar to Dramamine. Maybe it doesn't make you as drowsy as some people do have sensitivities to Dramamine. Uh, consider essential oils. There are actually some essential oils out there that are known to kind of subdued any motion issues. For example, ginger or peppermint. You could also get involved with just some ginger chews or ginger candies to kind of suck on. Or hey, how many times have you gone to a restaurant and they had these like mints in a dish? Yeah, grab a few of those, stick them in your airplane bag. Sometimes just sucking on like peppermint candy or like a candy cane can kind of help subdue some of those uh, feelings there. But you definitely want to prepare because you just never know when you're going to get to a motion uh, situation. Which brings me to my next one. I won't go anywhere, guys. Call me weird without a vomit bag. These are vomit bags. You can actually get them on Amazon. They are very thin, right? You can just pack a couple of these. You, you know, they go around your mouth and then they turn into an actual bag for obviously the vomit. I'm being a little graphic here, but I won't go anywhere without some form of vomit bag or container. Now, I know most airlines, most, have a vomit bag behind the seat, but I have actually gotten into situations where they weren't there, or they ripped, or they didn't work. So err on the side of caution, guys, and bring a couple of vomit bags. I mean, especially if it's your first flight, your first time flying with your kiddos, you have no idea if they're motion sickness sensitive or not. Pack the meds, pack the bags, I promise you. If you didn't have to use them, good for you and if you did have to use it you're gonna be thankful you packed them right next one on my list is a hoodie now i will not fly without a hoodie or some people like to use a travel scarf do you know why hoodies are great because not only if you if it's a little cold on the flight right you can wear a hoodie but the key here is the hood part to go over your head. You can actually pull it tight, kind of protect your ears if you want to kind of dilute some sounds. But the most important reason is so you, if you want to take a nap or you're resting your head on that headrest. Can't tell you how many hundreds and thousands of people have rested their heads on that headrest. So if you wear a hoodie, or a neck scarf that you can kind of just put over your head, especially for longer flights, international flights, flights where you might be taking more of a snuggle nap. Uh, it is kind of helpful to go ahead and cover and protect your head from the back of those seats. Next thing on my list is a blanket. There was a situation where we flew winter here to hot season in Florida. Well, the airport was so cold. Every time they opened the gate, you could feel the, you know, the cold air coming in. When we got on the airplane, it was freezing. Ever since then, I was like, nope, I'm not traveling without a blanket. Not a full body blanket. It's kind of like a lap blanket, but I can at least put it on my lap. I can put it behind my head. I can hold it. I can snuggle it. I can wrap it around my body because you just never know if the flight itself is going to be chilly, whether you're coming from chilly weather or not. They're especially helpful for long flights. Again, those international flights, Hawaii, any places you're going that's super far away, it could be helpful to have a blanket. You got kiddos who might want to take a nap 
Who, who doesn't want to snuggle in a nice little blanket? Might help those kiddos fall asleep just a little bit better. So yes, always in my travel bag is some form of fuzzy wuzzy blanket. Next up is entertainment. Now recently I got back from DC. Now I've been flying Delta for the past several years, pretty much exclusively. And when we went to DC, I had no control over what airline we were gonna be on and we ended up coming home on American. And even though I knew this in advance, it was disappointing. American didn't have any individual TVs, which means no entertainment. There was no big TV, individual TV, no music to listen to, nothing. I was so used to Delta with my private TV. I get out my headphones and I watch a movie. Not on American. It was as boring as all get out, right? So you want to prepare and pack entertainment, whether it's a book you want to read, whether you want to preload the tablet, or the phone, you wanna bring some sort of game system for the kiddos or yourself, doesn't really matter, but having some form of entertainment is just gonna kind of make that flight go a little bit faster. And you know what, it's actually really helpful if you have someone with motion sickness because if you get them distracted doing something else, uh, sometimes that can help. I know it helps my kids a lot to just stick on the headphones and just kind of zone out in front of a movie. But yes, whether you're packing coloring books and entertainments for the littles, a book for yourself or a magazine, perhaps you're gonna work on your laptop, whatever it is, definitely some form of entertainment. Next thing up is a change of clothes. Now I know this sounds weird, and this isn't because I'm a germaphobe, guys. It's because what if you left with one type of weather and you arrive to a different type of weather? So if I leave here and say jeans and a hoodie and I arrive to Florida and it's 10,000 degrees and everyone's wearing tank top shorts and, you know, flip flops, I'm going to be really hot walking through that airport. I'm going to be really hot on that shuttle. I'm going to be really hot as I'm going to the airport. So if I'm in a situation where I'm leaving and I have to wear a coat and the pants because it's cold and I'm going to a situation where it's hot, I am 100% packing a change of clothes. Uh, you know, the hoodie I can take off and I'm in a t-shirt, but I'll swap out those pants for shorts. I will swap out those shoes for my Birkenstocks. I will make sure my sunglasses and my sun hat are ready. Whatever it is that we need so we can quickly change our clothes, 100% always do that. And the same thing goes for vice versa. What if you're leaving a sunny destination and you're going to a colder destination? So it really helps to have a few of those kind of change of clothes situations. And yeah, I'll pack it for the whole family. If we started the flight in sweats, but when we got to Florida, it was too hot. Yeah, we gotta, we gotta quickly put on some shorts. Number 13 is a travel neck pillow. Now that we don't have to worry so much about COVID, I don't know about all that. Um, I love traveling with my neck pillow, absolutely. They're perfect for longer flights. If you need to take a snooze, if you just wanna rest your head and not kinda get some of that neck pain, um, there's all different kinds of travel pillows. You can get the kind that deflate and you have to kinda blow and air them up and then there's soft ones, large ones, foldable ones, ones that connect to your suitcase, whatever you want. Uh, this is mine, they probably don't sell it anymore. It was from Walmart. Um, I saw it in the kids section, had to have it. It works for me even though it's designed for a kiddo, but yeah, they're nice when you just wanna take a quick little nap -a -rooney. Absolutely love these, especially when I'm going from here to say Anaheim, when I'm going to Disneyland, I definitely need a neck pillow because that's a pretty long flight compared to, you know, going to Orlando here. Next thing up, and I, I don't really want to mention it, but it, I just always have it in my travel bag. I'm going to be honest, guys, a mask. Yeah, just like the COVID masks. I always travel with one now, and it's not necessarily just for COVID, but it could be germ season flu season, it, depending on if you're taking a long flight, if you're going international, if for some reason you, you're sitting next to someone who's coughing and sneezing the whole flight, you just might feel more comfortable having that mask. And I know people have different opinions about the mask, but they are very thin, they are very small. I always have one in my airplane bag because you just, I just feel like you never know. And sometimes I might just wanna pop it on. Earplugs, now. <laughs> Again, inspired by my DC uh, flight here, I, we were on three different flights and every single one of them had a screaming kid. 
scream one on the way home that kid was screaming bloody murder the entire flight now i'm not mad at the kiddo it happens they have ear popping problems too and the poor parent who's trying to shush the kid asleep and trying to rock this frustrated kid to sleep is difficult i don't blame the parents i'm just grateful that i pack earplugs because if i have a screaming kid or a screaming toddler or something going on yeah ear earplugs so you can kind of take a nap and distract yourself they're also good just in case you do want to take a nap if it's a longer flight and you want to distract yourself having earplugs can be helpful again or you could do like noise canceling earbuds well, you know whatever works for you but that that was that was something that was very helpful on that flight with the screaming kiddo next thing up now i don't personally pack this but i have a lot of clients and fans who do they pack a personalized fan on their flight because sometimes flights can feel overheated sometimes you're stuck on the tarmac or sometimes there's a mechanical issue and they're like we're gonna stick you on this plane for two hours with no air I have people that are like absolutely need to have a handheld fan to kind of just blow on them to keep them at ease maybe you don't feel good maybe you have some motion issues that's what I mean by don't feel good having a, a fan blowing on you could help now what I love about my handheld fan is yes you can handhold it and you know circle around your face you can also put it on its end and lean it up on a table and you can just angle it to have it blow on you so you can literally just lean back almost sleep and have it blow at you as opposed to you constantly holding it the whole time so if you are someone who's nervous about flying or perhaps you tend to get overheated yeah packing your own handheld fan could be beneficial to you next up is about the suitcase now i kind of learned this the hard way but i have transitioned all of my suitcase to be the 360 spinning wheel suitcases why because they are just so much easier and breezier at the airport going over carpet and then not carpet and then sometimes you have to drag it outside sometimes there's rocks and pebbles and you're crossing a street with that suitcase and you have to quickly spit so many reasons why having a 360 wheels on your suitcase are so beneficial we got one once and I fell in love with this suitcase. When we got home, I quickly swapped out all the suitcases for 360 wheels. They are just so much easier to push and pull for mom and dad and kiddos, everyone. We also had a situation where we had a non-spinning, soft-sided suitcase. Uh, when we, we went to Disney World with this suitcase, when we got back, the suitcase came along the baggage carousel in pieces. That's right, in pieces wheel here my underwear there a snack bar there a shirt there everything that was in the suitcase was all over the baggage carousel the suitcase came back in multiple parts it got destroyed i don't know what delta did with that suitcase but it was awful I swore right then and there I would only have hard sided suitcases. So now when I go to buy a new suitcase, it's gonna have the 360 spinning wheels and it's gonna be hard sided. But that's because of what happened to us. And yes, for those of you who wanted to know, I did get the trip protection insurance. Delta did refund and whatever Delta uh, didn't refund, the Disney trip protection uh, then covered the rest, but yes after a long trip and a long flight with cranky children because my kids were really young at that point to have our suitcase come back in pieces with our stuff all i mean it took us a couple of hours to get all of our stuff to find our stuff i mean it was ridiculous no more hard-sided suitcase that could just be me let me know in the comments what you prefer but definitely i have to have those 360 spinning wheels next thing up is a suitcase identifier now i'm not talking about the little id tag where you list your name and your phone number and whatever in addition to that i learned long ago when i was a little girl and i would yes i traveled as a kid uh, my mother would always take like christmas or birthday ribbon and tie it all over our suitcases big obnoxious bright colors and that was so we could easily identify which suitcase was ours right I have continued that on um, as an adult with so many people buying the same suitcase or just a black suitcase or a dark colored suitcase. It can be kind of hard to figure out which one is yours. In fact, I've seen multiple people grab a suitcase off the carousel, 
look at it, sometimes they unzip it, realize it's not theirs, and put it back. Just save yourself all the hassle, guys. Go to the store and buy some bright colored bandana. You could do the birthday ribbon like my mom used to do. I went to Walmart and bought a bunch of the same uh, pieces of bandana, and then I cut them into strips, fold them up, and tie them around every single suitcase handle. So now, no matter who's traveling, as long as they look for this red and black printed tie on their suitcase, we know that suitcase is ours. So even though having the ID is super helpful, also having a big obvious visual that that's your suitcase can be very helpful. You could get neon green, neon pink, I mean, whatever you want. This just happened to be what we got. But yes, you want some sort of big, bright, obvious visual that that is indeed your suitcase. Again, a lot of the suitcases look the same and it's kind of just nice to be able to instantly pick out which one is yours. Next one is, is more of a tip, right? Is it's really, really helpful if you know the security rules at the airport. Uh, again, inspired by DC, I could not believe how many of these kids had never traveled before. And I kept telling them, empty your water bottle, empty your water bottle, take out your water, throw out your water, empty out your water bottle. Some of them listened and some of them didn't. And for those who didn't, yeah, we got stuck at security. Knowing the rules of security, you know, when you go through and you get your body kind of checked out and your suitcase checked out, know those rules ahead of time. Know that in some airports, you have to take out all of your electronics, right? Some maybe not, most you do. So if you have a computer at the bottom of your suitcase, maybe adjust how you're packing so that the laptop is on top. Know that you have to take off your shoes. So like I said, plan ahead and get those slip-ons. Know that you cannot carry through bottles of water, whether it's in a throwaway bottle or refillable bottle. You got to dump out all of that liquid. So I purposely, when I'm going to the airport, I don't fill up my water bottle. I wait till I get there and I've already passed through security because what's the point of filling it up to then dump it out? Also the whole uh, clear bag, you know, for all of your liquid, liquid shampoo conditioner, know the rules about that. Be prepared, put them in a clear bag. Again, put them on top in your suitcase so you can easily pull them out if it's required at your airport. Now I know our airport is different because different machines require different things. So there's one particular machine at our airport where I don't have to pull out anything. I will wait an extra 10 minutes in line to go to that machine specifically because I don't have to dig for my laptop and my liquids and my whatever, you know, I can leave it in there. So kind of know that stuff in advance. Know that you do have to pull out things or you want to prearrange your travel bag or your suitcase bag accordingly so it's easier for you and everyone else when you go through security. Last one is for nervous flyers. Now this isn't necessarily something I do, but I have a lot of clients with this issue. They are so beyond nervous to fly. Flying just is like the worst thing on the planet for them. They do have medicine for this. You can go to your doctor and actually get prescribed medicine that will kind of calm you down so that you can fly on that flight in peace. I have many clients that want to take, you know, their Xanax or they want to make sure they get some liquor, or some sh champagne, and I'm not suggesting any of these things for everyday people, but if for some reason, you know, flying does really make you that nervous, go and talk to your doctor about it and see if there's something you can do to just kind of put you more at peace because there's nothing worse than just being stuck on that airplane and you are just so beyond uncomfortable and even scared, just so nervous to fly. Yeah, just talk to your doctor about it and see what uh, how they can help you with that. I do have a bonus for you guys and it's not necessarily for packing, although a little bit, it's more or less you wanna be prepared. You wanna be prepared for anything and everything, especially right now. I can't tell you how many flights I've been on lately. In fact, most of them were delayed in some shape or form. Whether we were delayed before we got on the flight or we had to sit on the flight for two hours because we were delayed or we had to sit on the middle of the tarmac. I mean, they won't let you get off. You're stuck on that plane. So if that plane can't leave for whatever reason, you're stuck inside that plane. Two, three hours, you can't do anything about it be prepared. Sometimes you can get off and get back on and then sometimes you get a delay and then you find out your flight is canceled. Be prepared. I always have all of my travel documents with me 
and printed. I always have all the apps to all the airlines, the cab companies, the hotels I'm staying at. I have all their numbers and all their information, whether it's on my phone or printed out. That way, if needed, you can make a quick judgment call, call the hotel, tell them what's going on, call the flight, get a new flight. I mean, depending on the situation, you want to be prepared and have all those things on hand and ready to go so you can solve the problem. Does that make sense? This especially happened to us over spring break. We went all the way to the airport, MCO, got on the airplane, sat on the airplane for the full length of a movie, only to find out our flight was canceled, but they didn't even tell us it was canceled until they made us get off the plane. They kept saying, delay, delay, we don't have a pilot, we're gonna let you get off while we still look for a pilot. Soon as we get off, they said, oh yeah, no pilot, you're canceled. Spring break, MCO, Orlando, right? So by the time we all got to the front desk of the airline, yeah, they couldn't get us a flight out for three more days. So everyone's crying and upset and yelling at each other. I got on my phone and quickly booked us a hotel and quickly booked us a car and quickly got us groceries and got us all set up for the next three days because we were essentially stranded in Orlando. So this is where being prepared and having all the info and the numbers and all those things can be beneficial to you guys. But yeah, guys, that is my top 20 things to pack um, in your airplane, airport, bag, or backpack. What did you think? Did you find this helpful? Do you want more videos like this? Let me know in the comments. But as always, guys, if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. If the subscribe button is red, please click it, turn it gray, hit the bell icon for notifications, like this video, and comment. I realize some of these things, you're like, oh, I already do that. But some of these things might have set off a little light bulb for you and you're thinking, oh yeah, that would be a good idea for our next trip. Let me know in the comments and as always, let me know if you like these types of videos because of course I can make more if this is something you guys enjoy, but let me know. As always guys, mahalo for watching. Nina out. Bye guys. No.